Hey kids, we're gonna learn about superheroes today with superpowers. Okay, I'm not gonna actually talk like that the whole time. But what I am gonna do is talk to you about some more power properties. This time we're gonna talk about the division properties of exponents. Last time we talked about the multiplication ones or the product um, powers of exponents. So we're gonna focus on two goals today. And our two goals are one I can divide powers that have the same base and two I can simplify powers of quotients okay we'll talk about what both of those look like um, but they're gonna be these two properties the quotient of powers property and the power of a quotient property all right now let's review our rule of thumb that we talked about last time when in doubt, always expand the original exponents and then rewrite them as new ones either by combining or canceling things out. Today we're going to be canceling things out. Last time we did more combining, but we're going to be doing more canceling things out today. Okay, but you can always do that. You don't ever have to take the shortcuts. You can always write this out, write them out, and make sure it works that way. So why don't we start off with quotients of powers. So I have two examples here. I'm going to actually do the x1 first. So, well, we'll do it. Let's switch them around. So, we have, it's called quotient of powers property because we have division of two different powers. And I'm going to put in parentheses here that they have to have the same base. Because they do have to have the same base. It won't work if they had different bases. Meaning, if this first example, 2 to the 6th power over 2 to the 2nd power, if it was like 2 to the 6th power over 3 to the 2nd power, we couldn't do that. We couldn't actually use this property because they don't have the same base. This both has the base of 2, so we're going to work with it that way. All right, I'm going to erase that. All right, well, let's first start by writing it out. Use that rule of thumb. So this would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 over 2 times 2. All right? Now, if you look at this, think about what happens when you have 2 divided by 2, like 1, 2 over another 2. Well, they cancel each other out. You're dividing the same number. It's just going to become 1. So if I take 2 over 2, that's 1. So in other words, it's just gone. If I have 2 over 2 over here, again, it's 1. It's just like multiplying 1 by the whole thing, which doesn't change it. So now the only thing that's left is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 over 1, which equals 2 to the 4th power, or I think 2 to the 4th power is 16. Okay, but we ended up with 2 to the 4th power because things canceled out. Nothing on the bottom anymore. Now let's do it with x's. Um, this would be x times x times x times x on top, and on the bottom we have 7 of them, so x times x times x, times x, times x, times x, times x. Okay? Now, looking at this again, we can cancel some things out. x over x is just 1, so it's gone. x over x, x over x, x over x. There's nothing left on the top, which means it's just a 1. And then on the bottom, we have x times x times x, which is x cubed. And if you remember back from our negative exponents, you can also write that as x to the negative third power. All right, so x to the negative third means you put the, to make it positive, you put it on the bottom, um, and then it would just be one on top, um, or you could go backwards like we did here. All right, so that's the basic way of doing it, expanding it and seeing what you can cancel out. Now, the other way to do it is based on this rule. So it would be worth writing down. When dividing powers with a common base, simply keep the base and subtract the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So let's look at this right here. Let's see if we can use that rule. Keep the base. So let's look at this one right here. Keep the base. So I'm going to keep 2. And do the top exponent, which is 6, minus the bottom exponent, which is 2, which would be 2 to the 4th power or 16, which, if you look over here, is what we had. 
lot shorter if you can remember that, that rule. Let's try it for this one. This would be x would be the base, and we do the top exponent, which is 4, minus the bottom exponent, which is 7, and you get x to the negative third power, which, again, is what we ended up having over here if we wrote it like that. Okay? Shorter if you know that rule and if you do it correctly. So that is the quotient of a power's property. Now I have two challenge problems if you'd like to try them right now. Well, we've got some more at the end. But, for instance, this first one, you have to use that property. There's no way you really can do it without using that property. And that property, if you would do it correctly, um, would be saying you keep that base of an x and you do 3 fourths is the top exponent minus 1 half. Okay, I mean, you look at that, how do you do 3 fourths minus 1 half? Well, don't look at it too hard. Just find the same, the common denominator, uh, common denominator, so we'll do it over here. 3 fourths, the common denominator with 1 half would be 2 fourths. So now you can subtract them and you get 1 fourth is your answer. So in other words, this is s to the 1 fourth power. All right. Now, the second one is a little bit different because it has multiple variables in it. And there's two ways to do it. The first way, again, you can do it by writing it all out. So let's do it that way. M times M times N times N times N times N. All over 1M, 2M, 3M, 4M, 5M times 3Ns. Oops, n times n times back her up times n. All right, let's see what can cancel out. We have an m over an m that'll cancel out. Another m over an m that'll cancel out. That's all the m's there are on both. So we have an n over an n, n over an n, n over an n. So what we're left with here is n over m to the third power. Or if you rewrite that with the m on top, it would be m to the negative third power times n. All right. Second way I'm going to show you is a little bit shorter. It's using that rule. Let's look for common bases again. So we have m. We can use our m as a common base. And we're going to do 2 minus 5. Because the exponent on top is 2. The exponent on the bottom is 5. And then we'll have n. We have 4 minus 3. So if you simplify that, you get 2 minus 5 is negative 3 for the m's. And then for the, oops, for the n's, I keep writing m. Um, for the n's, you have 4 minus 3, which is 1, or just n. And that's exactly what we had right up here. So shorter, um, you have to know the rule, though. So let's go on to the second part, which I think will be a little bit easier because it's very similar to what we did with power to a power. So that's why I wanted to refresh our memory. The quotient to a power. This is the power to a power property. It's where you have a power, like 5 to the 4th power, raised to a power. And recall, we kind of distribute this to the power in there. So we end up doing um, 5 to the 4 times 2, which is 5 to the 8. Okay, and I'm not going to find that answer right now. Um, same thing with this one. We distribute it to that exponent. So we have x to the 5 times 2, which is x to the 10th. The quotient to a power property is super similar. We're going to do the same thing, only we're going to distribute that exponent to the top number and to the bottom number. Okay, so we're dividing this here. Um, so we have 3 to the 3rd power over 5 to the 3rd power, which I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write it out because there's not even a common base. I'm just going to get 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. And I don't think that can simplify it all, so we're going to leave it like that. Um, on the top, or on the second one, distribute it to that and distribute it to that. 
Now the top one is just going to be 8 to the 6th power, because there's no power on the 8. The bottom one is going to be that n, kind of like we did before, to the 5 times 6th power, which will be um, 8 to the 6th power over n to the 30th power. Or if you want to bring that, back, that n on top, it would be 8 to the 6th power times n to the negative 30th power. Okay? So that's how you do the quotient to a power of property. All right, so here's that rule again. When a quotient, well, when a quotient is raised to a power, simply keep the base and multiply the exponents together like we did. Okay, make sure you do it to all of those parts. So I have one challenge problem. Let's see if we can figure this one out. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to distribute that outside exponent to all the parts inside. So yes, we have to distribute it to the 2 and to the x to the 6th power, and to the y to the 4th power. So let's rewrite this. It's going to be 2 to the negative 3rd power times x to the 6th times negative 3rd power all over y to the 4 times negative 3rd power. So let's simplify a couple of those. This is 2 to the negative 3rd x to the negative 18th over y to the negative 12th. And now remember, we don't want any negative exponents usually, so let's change it. Anything that has a negative, you should flip to the top or to the opposite part to make it a positive. So in other words, we're going to put the 2 to the negative 3rd on the bottom as 2 to the positive 3rd. Um, and we're going to put x to the positive 18th of the bottom, so it makes it a positive, and then y to the positive 12th on the top. And there's nothing else that can be simplified um, right there, unless you say the 2 to the 3rd is 8, which you can certainly do. So we can change it to y to the 12th over 8x to the 18th power. All right? So, we have... Well, maybe I'm going to do this first. I have two challenge problems here, big challenge problems, um, but I want to recap all the exponent properties before I have you do those. All right? Product of powers property. and all, The first three we talked about last time. So product of powers. When we have the same base and two different things, we add the exponents together. Two different exponents, we add them together. Power to power, like we just reviewed here, is when you have a power outside of a power, and that's when you multiply those. That's the shortcut for multiplying those. Power of a product is when you have two things multiplied together, and you have that raised to an exponent, and then you distribute that exponent to the two parts. So you get a to the m power and b to the m power. Negative exponents we talked about. Um, to make it a positive, you just put it on the opposite um, part of the, the fraction. So that's one by itself. And then today we talked about these two. The quotient of powers property. We subtract the exponents if they're the same base. And then the power of quotient property, where you distribute that exponent to the top and the bottom. Now there is one that we're missing. It's the zero exponents. I don't know how that didn't end up in here. But that would be if you have a to the zero power, or anything to the zero power, it's going to be equal to one. Always. The exception would be if you had zero to the zero power. That's the only exception. That would not. That would just be zero. All right. So let's go up here. Two challenge problems. I'm going to say try them on your own. Pause it right now. Try them on your own, and then you can compare. I'm going to go through the the work and the answers in a second. You can compare. All right. You can take a look at my work. Um, I kind of try to show it step by step. Simplified any of those properties. Um, if there was negatives, I flipped them. So, for instance, on the on the first problem where there was negatives here, I switched like this one to the bottom, this one to the bottom, this one to the top, this one to the top, so I can make them positives. And then I simplified from there. We had three ends on top and six ends in the bottom, so three of them cancel out on both the top and the bottom. Um, and then I also simplified three to the third would be 27, and six to the third would be 216. On the bottom. Um, it wasn't as many negatives, but I did switch a couple here. 
All right, and then that allowed me to combine the y's on the top and the x's on the bottom. But I also simplified the 4 and the over 8, because that would be reduced to 1 over uh, 2. And then I end up getting y to the 10th, or 1y to the 10th, over 2x to the 5th. So we went from all of this to that smaller monomial. All right, and that is a great review of just about all the exponents properties. Um, specifically in this lesson, though, I can divide properties of the same, or po powers of the same base, um, and I can simplify powers of quotients. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day.